At the turn of the 20th century, a newly discovered site with excellent fossil preservation was discovered called the Burgess Shale high in the Rockies. A discovery was made that changed the way we thought about the evolution of complex organisms. This here is Morella. It displays all characteristics of modern arthropod groups. However, the rock that entombs it is half a billion years old. Arthropods share a number of characteristics. A hard chitinous exoskeleton, segmented bodies, flexible joints. Really basic one is a crab, crustaceans, the myriapod, centipedes. Turn over any stone, you would see these. Arthropod diversification really occurs in the middle Cambrian. We encounter animals such as Sanctocaris, Anomalocaris, and Morella. Anomalocaris, once an apex predator, ruled the seas. It had two grasping tusks at the front, which was used to seize prey. Two large complex eyes to view, and then behind you have a segmented body with no limbs, but it would have moved in a kind of a wave motion. Sanctocaris leaves to be a perimeter salicerate, has a head that bears five jointed limbs, and Morella deposit feeders and detritivores that lived in the benthic ethos. Both of these had the distinct segmented body with jointed limbs on each segment. Moving out of the Cambrian, you see groups of arthropods, such as the crustaceans and trilobites, going on through the Ordovician. Numerous trilobite fossils found from this period suggesting the class is already quite diverse. Uh, the crustacean fossils are commonplace throughout the Devonian and later. The arthropods, they were the, the kings of the sea during the Cambrian period, but as time progressed with the rise of vertebrates, the competition began to get fierce. Meanwhile on land, plants had flourished. With decaying material littering the near shore, the land was ripe for the taking. This was one small step for arthropods, one giant leap for evolution. Arthropods invaded the land in the late Cambrian and the first one to do so was called Eutycasinoids. They looked scorpion-like but weren't closely related at all. There's trace fossils found in Canada and the footprints were left in Aeolian sediments. Arthropods were pre-adapted in that they had an exoskeleton that supported their weight on land, segmentation, and internal gills. Their exoskeleton functions like a reverse scuba suit. Back in the sea, most of them were either detritus feeders or predators, and they remained like that because plant material was very difficult to break down. There was an explosion in arthropod diversity after they secured the land, and particularly the mouthpieces of arthropods developed very quickly to form for example, mandibles and venom fangs. Venom fangs would be present in today's centipedes and spiders. With the diversification of arthropods, after securing the land, one lineage took to the skies. First animal ever to do so. The insects had arrived. Arthropods actually started flying during the Devonian. In the Carboniferous, they were actually able to fly and go from trees to trees. And they were feeding on the soft reparative parts of conifers. There are two theories about the evolution of flight in arthropods. First one is called paranotal. They developed rigid stops on the thorax. Those stops were just allowing them to glide at first, but then they turned into more flexible and useful wings that would allow them to fly. The second theory is called apicoxal. The gills that were in the abdomen of the insects moved to the thorax and then turned into wings from there. And you can still see that in the nymph states of some insects. The main advantage of insects over other groups that developed flights is that they kept their legs. Birds lost their front legs because they turned into wings and they can't use them as legs anymore. So their locomotion on the ground is not as good as insects' locomotion. They take up oxygen very easily through pores on the sides of the bodies. So the high level of oxygen at that time means that insects could grow very, very large, much larger than what we can see today. But the paradise of the forests and the oceans were about to come to a catastrophic end. A mass extinction was looming. At the end of the Permian, a massive volcanic activity rocked the changing earth. This upset the climatic balance, blocking out sunlight and causing acid rain, which decimated food chains. 
and the ocean's acidifying. Ocean circulation grounded to a halt and anoxia crept in. Over a relatively short time period, up to 96% of all marine life and 70% of all terrestrial life was wiped out. This spelled out the end of the trilobites, which had been hit hard by the late Ordovician and late Devonian mass extinctions. The last three remaining genera didn't stand a chance. They had been so diverse, yet limited to the marine realm. The PT was the only mass extinction to affect insects, with eight groups going extinct. Once conditions stabilized, space was cleared and new opportunities were calling for those ready to fill those niches. Who else but our friends the insects? So what we see emerging in the early Cretaceous, once plant life has rebounded from the PT extinction, is a, a sort of co-evolution between insects and angiosperms, that is flowering plants. It probably began when insects came to eat the pollen of the plants and then moved on to other plants, bringing the pollen stuck to the body with them. Over time, plants started to actively attract insects with nice smells of bright colors, different shapes. The first one had large plain flowers, uh, just like you see on magnolias today. Looking at it today, insects and flowering plants are the most diverse groups of organisms in existence. It really is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, success story in natural history. From in between sand grains at the bottom of the ocean to the highest mountain, krill thriving at the world's poles to sand beetles in hot desert, arthropods are everywhere. Arthropods went from ruling the oceans to conquering land and air to being abundant in every environment on our planet in the face of hardship and change, making the evolution of arthropods a nearly perfect success story.